MS is a serious, chronic and debilitating disease. This movie outlines our current knowledge of the pathophysiology of MS and describes the mode of action of interferon beta treatment in relation to these processes. The cause of MS remains unknown. However, over the past 20 years, considerable progress has been made in our understanding of the pathological processes that underlie this disease. MS is a complex and heterogeneous disease involving many different levels of pathology. Although physiological damage occurs in the central nervous system, which consists of the brain and the spinal cord, this damage is caused by a malfunctioning immune system, which attacks the nervous system. The neurological symptoms seen in MS are thought to be related to the problems in nerve conduction that result from axonal demyelination and disruption. However, the inflammation and edema that occur following a breach of the blood-brain barrier also contribute to CNS damage. In MS, the immune response is initiated outside the CNS when an antigen, resembling a self-antigen such as myelin, is phagocytosed by a macrophage and subsequently presented to a T-cell. The T-cell then becomes activated. Rebif binds to specific receptors on antigen-presenting cells and T-cells. This reduces the expression of molecules that are required for antigen presentation and decreases T-cell activation. Activated T cells release cytokines, including gamma interferon and interleukins, which bind to cells such as B cells, macrophages and other T cells, further augmenting the immune response. These cytokines also cause the expression of surface adhesion molecules, such as VCAM on the endothelial cells lining the blood vessels. Activated T cells express VLA4 molecules, which can bind to VCAM, allowing the T-cell to pass through the blood-brain barrier into the CNS. Rebif decreases T-cell activation and secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines, helping to prevent further activation and amplification of the immune response. Rebif also helps to prevent T-cells from entering the CNS. By decreasing VLA4 expression on T-cells and increasing the levels of the soluble form of VCAM, Rebif reduces the cell's ability to interact with membrane-bound VCAM on the blood-brain barrier. The levels of guidance molecules known as chemokines and enzymes that assist in the digestion of the matrix membrane are also decreased by Rebif. In the CNS, activated T cells continue to release pro-inflammatory cytokines locally, and this contributes to increased permeability of the blood-brain barrier. Other immune cells, including B cells and macrophages, also enter the CNS through the blood-brain barrier, further enhancing the local immune response against myelin. B cells produce antibodies that directly attack myelin and oligodendrocytes, while macrophages function within the CNS to phagocytose myelin. Rebif impacts on T cell activity in the CNS. Following exposure to Rebif, any T cells that cross the blood-brain barrier secrete reduced levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Rebif's ability to reduce the levels of pro-inflammatory molecules decreases activation and reduces the number of inflammatory cells within the CNS.
The inflammation that develops following a breach of the blood-brain barrier diminishes over time. This allows repair processes to be effected and symptoms improve. Iron channels redistribute along the axons. Oligodendrocytes proliferate and some remyelination takes place. The ability of Rebif to reduce inflammation helps to promote this recovery. While stripped of their myelin sheaths, the exposed axons are susceptible to further injury from inflammatory mediators. Accumulation of axonal damage is thought to underlie the disability often seen in patients who have MS. However, long-term clinical data prove that there is a significant delay in disease progression in patients treated with Rebif. As we have seen, the pathology of MS involves many different pathways and levels of cellular interactions, presenting a huge range of possible targets for therapeutic interventions. However, if we view the pathogenesis of MS in terms of four key aspects, we can see that there is considerable variation in the extent to which the different treatments for MS are able to provide multi-level protection from disease activity. On the basis of research to date, glitirima acetate is known to alter T-cell activation and may promote the development of anti-inflammatory T-cells. Natalizumab, a targeted immunosuppressant, acts on a single aspect of the MS disease process by blocking VLA4 and thus preventing T-cells from traveling into the CNS. In contrast, Rebif has been shown to act upstream of these treatments and impacts on four aspects of the disease process. Rebif is known to reduce T-cell activation and proliferation. Rebif also decreases the secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Rebif prevents inflammatory cells from traveling into the CNS. By decreasing the number of immune cells inside the CNS, Rebif reduces neuronal damage and delays disease progression. Until the cause of MS is uncovered and a primary molecular target can be identified, treatments that target several different aspects of the disease process may offer considerable advantages over those that affect only one or two aspects. By targeting the pathogenic mechanisms of MS in both the CNS and the periphery, Rebif provides a strong foundation for optimizing therapy.